of it goes. Hey everybody, it's Peter here from Strong Healthy Women and I am here with the lovely Sally Ann. Hey Sal. Hi everybody. Hey Peter, how are you today? I'm really, really good, thank you. We are here with Talking Wellbeing TV as we usually are on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 3.30 p.m. And all month we've been focusing on finishing strong and we've had lots of different topics over the month. But today we really wanted to delve into finishing strong itself. So I'm wondering whether you might be one of those women out there who is going, you know what, I'm going to start on the 1st of the 1st, 2021. So if you are one of those ladies, we are here to say there's no better time than right now to actually take some steps forward. Because what are you waiting for, really? Yeah. Interesting question. <laughs> yes, it is. Because whatever's happening in your life is probably not going to be that much difference in January, it's probably still going to be relatively the same. Um, and if life is a bit chaotic now, it's probably because of work and family and commitments. And, you know, we might be taking some holidays and think, well, I'm going to get on top of it in holiday season, which is in January. But then what's going to happen is you might start off with those good intentions and start taking those steps forwards. And then what happens is then all the stuff that was happening back now is going to just happen in February all over again. So it's good to be able to master what's going on in your life like right now and to put some plans in place. So have you got any ideas for us, Sal? Do you want to kick us off? I was just, I would like to say, though, keep in mind, you know, that Christmas, Christmas holiday period, if, you know, weight loss is something that your New Year's resolution is going to be. Keep in mind that the average weight gain over that Christmas New Year period is five kilos. So, oh yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. Are you happy to start off five kilos heavy in January, or would you prefer to start now and lose a few kilos so you've got that buffer at Christmas? Yeah, but I would. Say so if you lose it, please don't put it back on again. You no. don't want to create those cycles. What you want to do, yeah, yeah, that's right. What you want to do is really create something that's going to work for you that is all about a healthy lifestyle. So there's no point going with all of these fad bits and pieces. You know all the names and everything like that. So and I'm not going to go into any of the details. But you want to be able to work out you know, some type of eating plan, some type of exercise plan, and that is going to work for your life and what you've got currently going on. Yes. So and that is sustainable. Se easier said than well. done. Mm. Sorry, what was that, Sal? I said, and that is sustainable as well. So you mm. could you know, yep. look at a, at a fad diet, but is that going to be something that you're going to be able to do? Um, mm. on a day-to-day -day mm. basis. Yep. So the first place that I would start with is to actually look backwards. So take a look at this year. So it's been a year that's been quite different to what we've ever experienced before, and we know that. So, But what I want you to do is to actually just have a look back into everything that's transpired and what are the things that you've learned or achieved that you think, I'm going to keep this in my life? That's the first place. Because mm -hmm. you may have developed different types of patterns and routines um, when we got forced into lockdown. And some of us are still in lockdown. So yeah. you might have developed these different types of routines. And if they're working for you, when you get out of lockdown, it's probably a good place to go, well, hang on a minute. If it worked for me then, I'm going to keep it. Mm -hmm. But then the other thing you want to look at is what hasn't worked. So binge watching TV, eating your chips and your chocolate, maybe hasn't worked so well. 
<laughs> well, maybe it has. <laughs> maybe you've totally, totally enjoyed it and that's okay too. Um, but it may not have worked. So it's like, well, okay, that doesn't work. So if it doesn't work for me, what could I do? So what actions can I take? What's leading me up to going and sitting on that couch and binge watching? Is it the fact that you just want to unwind and relax? Is it that you're feeling a little bit emotional and you don't want to deal with something that's going on in your life? Is it the fact that you've got a whole series all recorded and you want to sit down and watch them? That's okay too. So, Is yeah, just, just thinking it about... Could be, it could be a habit too. You know, oh, it could be too. Good habit. point. 6, 6 p.m., you know, it's sit down and we all we watch the news, you know. That was my parents. 6 p.m. the habit. news went on. and then, Yeah, it was a habit. Um, it Not my habit. <laughs> as soon as dinner's finished, you sit down and the habit is that you watch the, fa you know, your favourite shows of the family or whatever's on TV. So it could, mm. could very well be mm. a habit. Yeah, it, it definitely could be a habit too. And so then what you're looking at is, well, okay, if that's the case, what else could I do in place of it? So if it's an emotional reaction, then when you feel yourself going towards that TV, stop yourself and just, you know, give yourself, um, and we and I know we talk about this all the time, the Mel Robbins five-second rule, you know, count yourself backwards, five, four, three, two, one, and just really take those five seconds to think about whether it's something that you really, really want to do or whether you are just doing it out of habit or whether it's that you just want to lose yourself in that, that mindlessness right then and right there. Um, and... If that's your decision, that's okay. So don't, you know, don't beat yourself up about it or anything like that because, you know, it's okay to give yourself permission to do things like that. Um, I know that sometimes I do um, on a Sunday afternoon, I go, you know what, I'm just going to sit around and see what movies are on right now <laughs> and just put my feet up and have a little watch. <laughs> so, and that's okay. So, Really reflecting on what's worked, what you're going to take forward, what hasn't worked, why hasn't it worked for you, and what else can you do in place of it? So they're all big questions, but I know that you are capable and of actually sitting down and thinking about these things, it really is whether or not you want to do those things. So I want you then to back this up a little bit and to think about what does your healthy, happy, life look like so when you know what it looks like I want you to tap into the feelings of how that would play out for you and use that feeling to then sit down and do this reflection process anything to add on that sir take it back to think back to January I think as well December, January, what did you promise yourself last December that you would do this year as far as your health and mm. fitness? And did you achieve that? Mm. Mm -hmm. and, yep. and then into what Peter suggested about what's worked, what hasn't worked, reflecting on what your situation is and what your actions have been. Yeah. Yep. Mm, yeah. So there's this, uh, look, we could get into goal setting. And I know that we do a bit of goal setting and everything like that at Strong Healthy Women. It's not totally like right there for me as goal setting because 
you can just say, okay, I want to, I want to get fitter, I want to get healthier, I want to lose, as you said, five kilos, um, or I want to fit into a dress. And they're great. They're, they're great goals. But why do you want to do that? What does it mean to your life? And what are the actions you need to take in order to achieve those goals? So it's more about when it comes to goal setting, it's more about the actions, the small, tiny, little baby steps that you can take that you can do one step at a time, master it, perfect it, keep it going until it becomes, as Sel mentioned earlier, becomes part of your habit, part of your routine, part of who you are. It's in your DNA. And so when you can do that, then it becomes part of your healthy lifestyle. And if, mm. if it is that five kilos, don't look at that five kilos. Break it down mm. as people break it down step by step. Yeah. Day by day as well. Mm. What am I yeah. going to do today? Yeah, that's right. So, yeah. Yeah, so, so totally so. Like we could, and, and we can do this, we can give you meal plans and we can help you achieve that five kilo loss like that if that's mm -hmm. what you want to do. But when we start working with you, we're going to ask you the hard questions as well too. So mm -hmm. we're going to say, well, okay, when you follow these meal plans, which are all just based on healthy eating, we're going to start asking you questions like, is this food that you could normally eat? You know, how much do you cook at home? Um, how much do you eat out? You know, how much processed food do you have in the house? Um, and, and we might start really, really simple with you by saying, well, okay, you can follow the meal plan, but now what I want you to do is to start, and we've got the insiders doing that this week, haven't we, Sel? We've said to them, what we want to do is we want you to track the number of whole foods you have in each meal. So, you know, real food. Yeah. So at the end of the day, okay, I had 13 today, I had 16 yesterday, I had 14 today. So what it's doing is you're becoming more invested in that healthy lifestyle. It's not something that we want you to do forever and a day, write it down. I mean, we don't want to be obsessed with having to put, you know, how many calories we're having in, a, in an app and, and keep working that stuff out. Look, quite honestly, who wants to do that? There are people who do, but I know for you and I, that's, that's not what we want to do. We want to be able no. to look at our meal and enjoy our meal and have just real food that nourishes our body. So like today at lunch, I made um, some chili prawns and I had a mango salsa with it. Um, and Paul happened to pop in for lunch. From, yeah. <laughs> and he says, oh, that was so nice. So I'm glad I came home for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> So, and it was, every single thing in it was real food. Yeah. And mm, the thing which is too nice. is um, if you start tracking it, you start to understand mm. it. So it will yes. then get to the point where you understand what whole food, whole food which whole foods are for you and... Yeah, what, good what point. A, yep. What a plan, a food plan will look like and what your daily eating will mm. look like. Yeah, yeah, mm. totally. Because as we age, we get more intolerance as well too. So we might mm. find that we might get that little bit of belly bloat. Now, belly bloat is quite normal, but if it's something that's really unbearable or that it's something that's really, really big and uncomfortable or it happens quite a lot, then it might very well mean that there is some intolerances there and what you want to do is to actually find out what they are because when yeah. you find out what you are, what they are, then you can go, like, okay, I'm not going to have those things. You know, um, And my, then my, it's more comfortable. Yeah. Mm. My mum, Babsy, can't have capsicum or onion or... Um, anything spot like that spicy type thing, she gets a very upset stomach. And often, you know, yep. we're at barbecues or whatever, and there's dips or you know anything like that. She'll ask what's in it because that capsicum and onion really yep. upsets her stomach. 
Yeah, okay. <laughs> that reminds me. Um, I've just... You, w <laughs> um, in December, uh, we actually have a um, holiday, uh, healthy holiday gift guide coming out. And uh, so one of the emails that I've just written when you download those gift guides is I've included a cheesy dip. And <laughs> for most people who know me would go, she, you know, she's not going to eat cheese, but it's actually making cheese from cashews. Oh you were nice. really surprised how yeah. it is really nice. Yeah. So if you've never tried it, yeah, yeah. So that recipe is going to be in there. So yeah, Yum. be on the lookout for that as well too. You know what? So the other thing that I would really like to finish up with today is to talk about conversations. So actually having conversations with the people in your household. Yes. Because this is one area that we hear a lot about that the family needs me to do this or the family needs me to do that um, or the the family won't understand or you, they want to have uh, the you know great big massive chocolate cake and when it's there I can't I can't say no to it so having those conversations with the family to say look you know, and I I can name a couple of clients here, but I won't. And one in particular is springing to mind where this is, is a continual loop that she keeps having. And I said, you have to have that conversation. They love you. They want to support you. They've said that. So you just have to say, hey, listen, give them all a recipe book for Christmas of the healthy way of cooking those foods. And that way when they cook it and bring it over, they're going to be cooking the healthy thing, which is not only good for you, but it's also good for them. And they're then setting that example for their family as well too. So it's a win-win all round. But whilst you don't have those conversations, and they can be difficult, whilst you don't have those conversations, then the, the cycle's not going to be broken because you're relying then on your willpower. And if you rely on your willpower, well, guess what? It's going to give in at some point. There are so many things thrown at us during the day. By the time we've got to lunchtime, that willpower is totally like almost gone. And that's why for most of us, when it gets to the afternoon time, that's when we give in and we go for the afternoon munchies because keep, the willpower just is not there. And keep in mind that... You've supported your family over how many years? So mm. they can step up and support you in, in your healthy lifestyle journey. Yeah, and, and I think sometimes that we underestimate them, particularly when they're teenagers as well too. Um, yeah. You know, we think that we still have to do everything for them. They're not little people anymore. They are, you know, semi-adults. They're almost adults. Um, and there isn't too much wrong with actually, you know, having them step up when you need a hand as well too and just say, look, I'm not well. I need you to cook the meals or I need you to do the, do the washing um, and I need you to help me out because I'm just not feeling well. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So anything else you can think of, Sel? Anything else you want to finish up with? I want to finish up with um, just deciding on on starting now. Make the decision to start now or finish the year strong. Yeah. Yeah. Opt for that rather yeah. than waiting until the 1st of January 2021. Make yeah. now your and of course, resolution. I'm just going to have a look. What day of the week is, is the 1st of January, Sel? Do we know? A Friday. It's, a, it's Friday. a Friday. Well, guess what? It won't happen on the Friday because the International Day of Starting is a Monday. So you're not mm. going to do it on the Monday. You're not going to do it on the, uh, sorry, the Friday, the Saturday or the Sunday. You will wait. And so we always wait for this beginning time. But there's no better time than right now to actually begin. I think the other thing is that um, taking the opportunity to be thankful and grateful for what we have so instead of just 
you know, grabbing our meal as an example and go <laughs> and scoff into it, what we do is we just take that moment to take a deep breath and to really go through our, our gratitude for the meal and the people that have been involved in actually getting that food there so that we yes. could actually eat it. Um, and when we give ourselves to other people, we feel good about ourselves. Yeah. So even though you might be not physically saying, hey, thanks, Farmer Joe, for growing that, you're not physically doing it, but you are actually doing it, you know, to to the wider universe type of thing. Yeah. So, um, and you'll feel good about it. Yes. And you never know, Father Joe might be connected to the uh, universe and he might pick up your thankfulness. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little bit of woo-woo for you on a Monday. <laughs> So just in summary, ladies, what we want you to do is to really not wait for the new year. We want you to make that commitment now because we do have, what's the date, the 23rd. Between now and Christmas, we've got another four or five weeks that we could really start to make good groundwork of moving forward. So and how we're going to do that is we're just simply going to take some time to reflect on the year that was. What we committed to at the beginning of the year and what's happened, the things that worked, the things that didn't, the things that we can take forward with us, the things that we need to just throw away. We should communicate with those around us so they know that this is the life that we want to lead. And to just simply take that time to be thankful for the life that we actually have. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thanks. Yep. Thank you, ladies, for joining us. Thank you, Sal. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us on this wonderful Monday afternoon, ladies. Yes, happy Monday, everybody. And uh, we won't be around this week on Wednesday and Thursday. Um, so... Wednesday and Friday, I should say. Friday. We yeah. will be here. We will be here on Sunday again. So we've got a couple of days off from Talking Wellbeing TV, but we will be back on Sunday for the weekly wrap up. So take care, Thanks everybody. Soon. Have a great week, and we shall see you all soon. Bye for now. Bye. Bye, Sal. Bye, Peter.